good morning students today let me start with polynucleotide strand or polynucleotide chain yesterday we have discussed polynucleotide chain is nothing but a strand or a long molecule or a long strand is formed by the polymerization of numerous nucleotides is nothing but polynucleotide strand let us see the polynucleotide strand in detail so polynucleotide strand is composed of composed of pentose sugar Now, the pentose sugar at one end is three-dash end where hydroxyl is present. Hydroxyl group. Hydroxyl group is present over the three-dash end. And phosphate is connected to one more sugar. In the same way, phosphate is connected to sugar continuously. And finally, carbon, hydrogen with phosphate. This phosphate is present at five dash n. This is phosphate. Now, this is a polynucleotide strand. This is a single polynucleotide strand. So, now see what are the components present in the polynucleotide strand. Let us take this as adenine. Here, let me take thymine. Here, let me take guanine. And here, let me take cytosine. Now, Now, this is a single polynucleotide strand or a polynucleotide chain. Start with sugar, pentose sugar. To the pentose sugar, a phosphate group is attached, and we notice that the nitrogenous bases adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. Now, what are the components of nucleotide deoxyribonucleotide in DNA? and riponucleotide in RNA. So this polynucleotide strand is composed of three components. One is a sugar, that is a pentose sugar, followed by second one phosphate and the bases, nitrogenous bases. These are, these are the three components which you notice in a nucleotide or a polynucleotide. Now, at one end, we notice that three dash so that is 3 dash. The 3 dash is not used at one end, that is hydroxyl OH group at 3 dash end, and the phosphorus or phosphate is present at the 5 dash end. Now, this is a single polynucleotide strand. In examination, so this carries two marks. Suppose the question may be asked write the double stranded polynucleotide strand. For that, we have to write one more sequence to complete the double standard polynucleotide strand. So now this is a single polynucleotide strand. Polynucleotide strand is nothing but a long chain or a long strand is formed by the polymerization of number of nucleotides. So a number of nucleotides combined together to form a polynucleotide strand or chain by the linkage. So in the linkage, we notice the sugar is connected with the, the nitrogenous bases one side and phosphate is attached to one more side. Now the three important components of nucleotide are sugar, that is a pentose sugar and phosphate group 
and one more nitrogenous bases. These are the three components of polynucleotide strand. Let us see the double polynucleotide strand. Double double poly nucleotide strand double poly nucleotide strand now this is single poly nucleotide strand let me start with that double poly nucleotide strand by using this Now, this is pentose sugar. Now, so here we have 3 dash OH and opposite we notice, we notice the OH. So instead of OH, we notice here phosphate. Phosphate group is present so this is by dash strand now now we have oh group at the three dash end and phosphate at five dash end this is hydroxyl this hydroxyl group now the sugar pentose sugar is connected phosphate to one more sugar and in the same way the phosphate is connected to the sugar and the phosphate is connected to the sugar. Now the adenine is connected with a thymine with double bond and the thymine is always combines with adenine with double bond. Now guanine always combines with cytosine with triple bond in the same way the sugar with guanine is combined with cytosine with triple bond now this is double helix double and in the sense two bonds are there double polynucleotide strand double polynucleotide strand now we observe First we have written only one chain or one strand that is single polynucleotide strand start with sugar, phosphate, nitrogenous bases and in the double polynucleotide strand one more strand consists of sugar, pentose sugar, phosphate and nitrogenous bases. Now this is double polynucleotide strand. This question may be asked for three marks. If it is the explanation, explain that it go for five marks. Now double polynucleotide strand consists of two strands. The first strand start with the pentose sugar and connected with phosphate 
and hydroxyl group is present over the 3 dash end and phosphate group is present over the 5 dash end. In the same way, these two are connected by nitrogenous bases. So, in the nitrogenous bases, always adenine combines with thymine with a double bond that is hydrogen bonds and always cytosine combines with guanine with triple bond. Now, this is the way in which the double double polynucleotide strand consists of two strands or two chains with with pentose sugar phosphate and nitrogenous bases so these nitrogenous bases connect both the polynucleotide strands so in double dna helix model we are going to discuss the polynucleotide strand in detail but the components of this nucleotide or the three components of nucleotide as we have discussed in early or pentose sugar phosphate phosphate and the one more component nitrogenous bases so the type of sugar note is this a pentose sugar and phosphate that is orthophosphoric acid and the, we have the nucleotides that is nitrogenous bases which are connected. Now this is double polynucleotide strand. Now in this polynucleotide strand, so what is polynucleotide strand we have discussed that a long chain or a long molecule is formed by the combination of number of nucleotides is polynucleotide chain. During the formation of nucleotide or polynucleotide chain, we notice three types of bonds. One is glycosidic bond, glycosidic bond, phosphoester bond, phosphodiester bond. Glycosidic bond is a linkage formed during the formation of nucleotide, that is, that is between the nitrogenous base and the sugar. And phosphoester bond is a linkage formed during the formation of nucleotide, that is, between the sugar and the phosphate, that means the phosphate is connected to the sugar and uh, finally dinucleotide the two nucleotides are connected by a linkage that is called phosphodiester bond so the phosphodiester bond is an important bond that links the nucleotides to form polynucleotide strand now this is about double polynucleotide strand we have single and double and by using this Next, we switch on to uh, structure of DNA or double helix model of DNA or wax and quick model of DNA. Now, let me start with structure of DNA. Structure of DNA. It is also called Watson and Crick model. Crick model of DNA, or it is also called double helix model. Double helix model model of DNA. Everything is same. Structure of DNA. It is also called Watson and the Crick model of DNA and double helix model of DNA. So all the things are related to one question that is structure of DNA. This question may be asked for five marks. Explain the structure of DNA or explain the Watson and Crick model of DNA or explain the double helix model of DNA. Now when we take into consideration of double model, double helix model of DNA, the double helix model of DNA was proposed by Watson and Crick based on the DNA diffraction studies carried out by Wilkins and Franklin based on that 
Watson and Crick proposed a well-known model called double helix model of DNA. Now in this DNA, Chargaff is also very important person. Based on the base sequence of Chargaff, Watson and Crick proposed this model that is double helix model of DNA. Let us see the double helix model of DNA in detail. Now this is 5 dash, 3 dash and 3 dash, 5 dash. Now in this Now Watson and Crick proposed double helix model of DNA. DNA is composed of two polynucleotide strands. The two polynucleotide strands, this is one and this is one. These are the two polynucleotide strands. These two polynucleotide strands twist in a right handed twist in a right handed right handed right handed fashion right handed fashion and appears like appears like a staircase appears like a staircase now double helix model of DNA is composed of two polynucleotide strands this one this one this is one polynucleotide strand this is one more polynucleotide strands, two polynucleotide These twist in a right hand turn, right hand fashion, and appears like a staircase. Now, the two polynucleotide strands, which are opposite, opposite, anti parallel, anti parallel, anti parallel. So these two are opposite anti parallel the polarity changes you now see this is 5 dash 3 dash and this is 3 dash 5 dash like this one of the strands start with 5 dash 3 dash and one more strand with the 3 dash 5 dash opposite this these two are opposite anti parallel so this is 5 dash 3 dash this is opposite 3 dash 5 dash hence it is anti parallel in nature and the complementary complementary so base pair so the base pairs are complementary that means now here adenine is present this adenine pairs with thymine suppose thymine is present it pairs with adenine cytosine is present it pairs with guanine guanine is present pairs with cytosine guanine is present pairs with cytosine now this is the base pair now this is a base pair, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like this. So in this pair, base pair, that is complementary base pair. Complementary means always adenine pairs with thymine and always cytosine pairs with guanine. That means one of the purine combines with pyrimidine and with the double and triple bond. Later we will see that. So now the two polynucleotide strands are opposite and anti parallel 5 dash 3 dash 3 dash 5 dash anti parallel and base pairs complementary always adenine pairs with thymine always cytosine pairs with guanine now this is complementary base pair now so when we observe this the amount of charge of Chargaff proposed Chargaff's base equivalent. Chargaff's base equivalent. 
basic quantity. So Chargas, according to Chargas, the amount of the amount of purines is equal to amount of pyramidines. According to Chargas, basic equivalent rule, with this Chargas basic equivalent rule, according to Chargas, the amount of purines is equal to amount of pyramidines. So which are purines? Adenine, amount, adenine and guanine is equal to cytosine and thymine. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. Adenine and guanine are purines. Cytosine and thymine are pyramidines. The amount of purines is equal to amount of pyramidines. Now in this, always one of the purine combines with one of the pyramidine in such a way always adenine pairs with thymine and always guanine pairs with cytosine or thymine pairs with adenine cytosine pairs with guanine both are similar purine combines with pyramidine that is the adenine a purine combines with a pyramidine thymine with two hydrogen bonds and always the guanine epurine combines with cytosine epiramidine with the triple bond. So hydrogen bonds are formed between the purines and pyramidine. So this is the way the sequence in which the amount of purines is equal to amount of pyramids A plus D is equal to C plus D. Always adenine combines with thymine. Always guanine combines with cytosine and A plus T by by C plus G is equal to 1 that is constant. So this is constant for a particular species and for other species this may vary. In this particular species adenine plus thymine by C plus G is equal to 1 this is constant. Now this is called Chargaff's base equivalent or Chargaff's rule. So what is Chargaff's rule? The amount of furans is equal to amount of pyramidines that is adenine plus guanine is equal to cytosine plus thymine. Always adenine pairs with thymine and always guanine pairs with cytosine. A plus T by G plus G, C plus G is equal to us that is constant for a particular species and it changes for different species. Now this is Chargaff's base equivalent rule. Now let us see how the base pair takes place between two, two polynucleotide chains. Now always now these polynucleotide strands are connected with adenine pairs with thymine, cytosine pairs with guanine, thymine pairs with adenine, guanine, guanine pairs with cytosine, cytosine pairs with guanine, adenine pairs with thymine, cytosine pairs with guanine, thymine pairs with adenine, Adenine pairs with thymine, guanine pairs with cytosine. Like this, the base pairs. The base pairs are attached from one polynucleotide to another polynucleotide. This is base sequence. Continuously takes place till the end. Now, So one right hand bead twist in one right hand twist we notice that one right hand twist we notice ten base pairs. One right hand twist we notice a ten base pairs and 
the distance between this is about uh, 34 and stamps. This measures about 34. This is about 34 and stamps. Now the distance between one nitrogenous base to another nitrogenous base is about 3.4 and stamps. And the distance between one polynucleotide strand with the another polynucleotide strand is about 20 and stamps. This is measurement. This is very important. So question asked for 5 marks. First you have to draw the diagram with the two polynucleotide strands. One of the polynucleotide strands start with 5 dash, ends with 3 dash. Another polynucleotide strand start with 3 dash and ends with 5 dash. And hence the two polynucleotide strands are opposite, anti-parallel as the polarity become opposite. And the complementary base pair always adenine pairs with thymine, always cytosine pairs with guanine. So, Adenine always pairs with thymine with double bond. Cytosine always pairs with guanine with triple bond. So this hydrogen bond sequence is also noticed and hence a complementary base pair is noticed. Now, one right hand twist, we notice that 10 base pairs, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that, 10 base pairs are present and uh, it measures about 34 and sums. And the distance between one base pair to another base pair is about 34 and some and the distance between one polynucleotide strand to the another polynucleotide strand is about 20 and some these three are important 10 base the distance 34 and some distance between the base pair is 33.4 and some distance between one polynucleotide strand with another polynucleotide strand is 20 and some now finally we have to conclude that this is polynucleotide strand each polynucleotide strand is composed of sugar, pentose sugar plus phosphate group. These are the two components. And self, uh, sugar and phosphate forms the backbone, forms the backbone of polynucleotide strand. And now you observe, these are the nitrogenous bases. These are the NB nitrogenous this is base pair, this is nitrogenous bases or base pairs. Now when we observe nitrogenous bases, one of the purine combines with another pyramid. This forms a, a ridge between or uh, it acts as a, uh, as we have, we use the word staircase, staircase. So in the staircase, this is, appears like a ladder. In the ladder, we have the steps. The nitrogen bases, these acts as steps. The nitrogen bases, which we notice, the base space, which acts as steps in the ladder. As staircase is nothing but ladder, in this ladder we have the steps. Each step consists of nitrogenous bases or base space, and this nitrogenous bases form the steps in the ladder or the staircase. Now, these nitrogenous bases, which form the axis. It found the axis in the DNA molecule. Now, this carries 5 marks. Now, carefully observe structure of DNA, Waxon and Crick model of DNA, or double helix model of DNA. Answer is same for all the three questions. This carries 5 marks. You start with Waxon and Crick proposed double helix model of DNA by studying the DNA diffraction data proposed by Wilkins and Franklin and DNA, double helix model of DNA is composed of two polynucleotide strands. Each polynucleotide strand acts as a backbone as it composed of sugar and phosphate. And these two polynucleotide strands are connected by nitrogenous bases. These nitrogenous bases form steps in the ladder acts as a steps in the ladder and these nitrogenous bases connect the both polynucleotide strands and, act that, and that acts as a axis for the molecule. Now, as this right hand term consists of 10 base pairs that measures about 
34 angstroms. The distance between one base pair is about 3.4 angstrom and distance between one polynucleotide strand with another polynucleotide strand is about 20 angstroms. And this is very important, Chargaff's base equivalent rule or Chargaff's rule. According to Chargaff, the amount of purines is equal to amount of pyrimidines. The purines are adenine and guanine and the pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine. Always one of the purine combines with one of the pyrimidine. Always adenine combines with thymine and always guanine combines with cytosine. Always adenine combines with thymine with a double bond and always cytosine combines with guanine or guanine combines with cytosine with the triple bond. These are the hydrogen bonds present. Now A plus T by C plus D is equal to 1 that is constant for a particular species and this may change from species to species. Now this is the explanation part for double helix model of DNA or vaccine and tweak model of DNA. And here we have to mention one more. We come across two groups. These are the two groups. One is major group and minor group. So now this is gap is more. This is this is called Now this is a major group. And this is minor group. A minor group, major group, easily you can identify. So this gap is more, this is major group, and this is less, this is minor group. So the two groups are noticed that in the double helix model of DNA. One is minor group and one more is major group. Now this is the explanation of double helix model of DNA, Watson and Victor model of DNA or structure of DNA. This diagram carries diagram carries two marks and explanation carries three marks. Totally, this question asks for five marks. Now that is Watson and Crick model of DNA. Thank you, students.